Oh, jeez. Oh. Hey, how's it going? I was eating the entrails of my latest victim. Pretty good stuff. It was Halloween. I was trying to get in the spirit of things. I was gonna dress up as Yu-Gi-Oh, but forgot the costume, so. This is what I have to do. Some of you may remember, last year, I talked about a little game called Dark Sea. If you didn't see that video, then you probably have no idea what this game is. But ever since I did that, I've been really wanting to do the sequel, Dark Seed 2. Oh boy. It takes 8 megabytes of RAM to run this game. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I can handle this. Now, usually I wouldn't spoil the ending of a game for you guys, but in this particular case, I just felt like it'd be much more interesting if I talked about the whole game, so I'm gonna be doing that. So, spoiler warning. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna get back to eating these entrails. Also known as Jello. The original Dark Seed ended with Mike Dawson, this guy, saving the world from the Ancients, a master alien race from the Dark World seeking to destroy the Earth. To do so, he had to enter the Dark World, pick up some kind of shovel that was just laying there for some reason, and destroy a mirror in his living room. Alright, I don't really remember exactly what happened to be honest, but I do remember rather enjoying the game, despite how retarded it was. Dark Seed 2 picks up where the original left off. You're still Mike Dawson, and you still have that epic mullet. You do, however, sound completely different than you did in the first game. What a quaint general store with a little bit of everything for day-to-day -day existence. I don't really expect this mannequin to talk to me, but it's a nice fantasy. Did I mention that Mike is kinda derpy? Because he is. The game starts with a completely ridiculous cutscene of Mike running through the dark world in a dream. Then a floating head of the girl he liked, Rita, pops up. Help me, Mike. Help me, Mike. After this opening, I wasn't sure if I wanted to throw the game away forever or keep playing because it was just so amazingly cheesy. Then Mike wakes up and lets you know via monologue that Rita has been murdered and that No place is safe from the darkness. Not even my hometown. Whoa! Nice graphic! As you begin wandering around your hometown, you quickly discover that the people are... Special. First, you've got your friend who's obviously the Fonz wannabe. Hey, I'm so cool it takes me 20 minutes to get to the sidewalk! Then there's this guy that looks like a cardboard cutout that shakes when he talks. And of course, you've got your crazy water hose guy. I'm just gonna relax and water my lawn for the next week or two. Then there's Mrs. Ramirez, whose only concern is. My money! Then there's a guy who just pops out of the bushes randomly. <laughs> Don't make me laugh! <laughs> and then there's a psychiatrist who thinks you're insane. But he has a sign on his wall that says, No es un cigar. Uh, Doc, I'm no expert, but I'm pretty sure that's a freaking cigar. There's also a clown who's sick and needs to take his medicine, but can't because he's at his post. Sounds normal enough, but he ends up dying because you didn't take it to him. His medicine was a whopping 30 seconds away, and instead of getting it himself, he just sat there and died. What a genius. But Mike isn't exactly the shining example of humanity either. First of all, he's a complete pushover. Go easy on me. I don't want to touch this crate. I'd probably get a splinter or a spider bite. He is pretty full of witty statements though. We used to joke about the sheriff's office, courthouse, and morgue all being next door to each other. First they tie him, then they try him, then they fry him. <laughs> That's funny. You're funny, Mike Dawson. But despite being as wimpy as he is, at least he's a rebel. Mom hates it when I leave the toilet seat up, but it's my little way of rebelling against the system. Fight the power! Mike Dawson is one unlucky guy. Not only did he get an alien fetus stuck in his brain in the first game, the ancients are back and this poor derp of a guy is caught up in it again. The girl he liked got brutally murdered, he's the primary suspect, and he has to defeat the evil alien ancients that are nearly impossible to stop for the second time in a row. But if anyone's qualified, it's this guy. I missed. 
Your only friend is the previously mentioned Fonz wannabe Jack. He seems pretty goofy, but at least he's got your back. In this corner, it's the big, the bad, Mike Dawson! Go easy on me. And in this corner, the huge douchebag with a gun, Jimmy Gardner! Stay out of my way. Gentlemen, start your engine. Here comes Mike with a big swing. Oh, but Jimmy has the counter and Mike is down. But wait, here comes the Fonz out of nowhere for the killing blow. What a show! Hey! Oh. Ah. For the first half of the game, you'll wander around the town, talk to people to find clues, and pick up random objects like a camera, a magnet off the fridge, and a clothes hanger from the garbage. Because of course you're gonna need those down the line. You actually do. After a while, you'll need to make the trip down to the Dark World through a portal in the carnival. The Dark World, which is basically a mirror image of the regular world, starts off with a naked lady ghost flying at you, so you know it's gonna be weird right from the get-go. She explains something about the ancients coming from space and enslaving the Dark World, and some holy triangle you can use to stop them. She also tells you that they're growing a behemoth to go into the regular world and basically destroy everything. No biggie. It's time for some advice from me, PBG. If you ever find yourself stuck in some strange dark world, definitely the first thing you should do is start barking orders to whatever evil creatures you may find. Let me inside the prison. I am a dark world prison official. Let me in. Oh, a dark worlder, are you? I bet you don't even know if it's day or night. Oh well, at least that's an easy question. Wait a sec. I can't tell if it is day or night. Ah, After you enter the dark world, more of the horror in the game starts to crop up. As you travel between the worlds, more people begin to die in both worlds, and you figure out that whoever's doing the killing in the real world is an agent working for the ancients who's taking the victim's heads and using them to power the generator that's feeding the fetus of the behemoth. Mike also starts to have some creepy dreams when he gets hypnotized by his psychiatrist, Dr. Sims. One in particular starring the water hose guy. Ouch! Not quite the reunion you hoped for, was it? Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to watering my lawn. After a while, you begin to become suspicious of Mike himself. He starts to do some pretty weird things, and it's hard to justify them after a while. Like when he punches the FBI agent in another fascinating action scene. Uh, uh. Oh no, I think I'm really in trouble. I need to talk to Jack. Speaking of needing to talk to Jack, Jack also begins to become suspicious. At this point, I was thinking that the dark agent murderer was either my best friend Jack or myself, but I wasn't sure which. Then this happens. Probably the biggest WTF moment in the entire game. Heck, just about any game I've ever played. This will explain everything. After this, I was convinced it was me. How else did she die? I was the only one there. Must be going insane or something. Either way, you still end up killing the ancients and stopping the behemoth, who's much smaller than I was expecting. How did this turn into this? Eh, whatever. Then you wake up in the psychiatrist's office with Jack, but Dr. Sims has been killed, and Jack tells you that you both killed him. And then he kills you. As it turns out, Jack is you. Trippy. I can honestly say I didn't see that one coming. Jack is more specifically your Dark World counterpart, which makes just enough sense for me to not bother questioning it, but I'm still not sure why no one else can see him. Either way, the game's over. But anyway, the real question is, how is one of the only people left alive the guy that was so stupid that he fell for this? Sheriff's office, Butler here. I want to report a robbery in progress. Come quick! Who's being robbed? The Dairy Freeze, just outside of town. Thanks. I'll be there in a jiffy. Now the sheriff is free to keep on living, reading his porno mags. Life just isn't fair sometimes. Poor Mike. He'll be forever remembered. Well, by me anyway. Let's all stand in remembrance of Mike Dawson, 
loving single guy who had no girlfriend. Or he had a girlfriend and then she got her head cut off, but before that she was cheating on him with a bunch of other people and then again she got her head cut off. But Mike Dawson was a loving guy. And he had a mullet, but he had a good heart anyway. And his mother didn't really like him very much. He stayed at home after having a traumatizing experience with some aliens who were inserted into his brain. But he was still a good, loving guy. And even though the sheriff knew he was the murderer, and he really was, but he wasn't. He was, though. And Everyone still loved Mike, and Jack was a good friend to Mike, yes, but Jack actually was Mike, um, but Jack still still was a good friend to Mike, but he also killed Mike and was also was Mike, and we all really love Mike. Let's all just say a word for Mike uh, in our hearts. Don't, don't bother saying it in the comments, I'm not, I'm not gonna really care about that. Uh, uh, just, just, let's all mourn for Mike. I really do care about the comments, though. That was a joke. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. Just as a reminder, next month is Zelda month. Starting on the first, there's going to be a lot of Zelda content on both this channel and on my second channel. If you want to see the Halloween video that I did last year on the original Dark Seed, or you want to see the last top 10 that I did, go ahead and click these annotations right here. As always, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter in the description below, and I really appreciate all the support, you guys. See you next time.